Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host today. My name is Iris Acker. I'd like you to meet a very talented panel. Sitting opposite me is Karen Stevens, who's an award-winning actress. And an award-winning playwright sitting next to Karen is Michael McKeever, whom we're always pleased to, to have, even if he's not writing a play, but he's gonna be performing in one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> multi-talented, another multi-talented, Bill Hirschman, who reminds me that he also is award-winning whenever I forget to mention That's it. Right. Bill yeah, Hirschman. Yeah, thank you. And our guest today, who we're so pleased to have, Nicholas Duckart. The topic is auditioning. I used to, actors walk around New York in T-shirts that say, life is an audition. Hmm. True? Oh, absolutely true. Without a doubt. <laughs> How do you explain it? How do we explain getting the part? Getting the part. Uh, well, you know, getting the part is is opening your heart, opening your soul, and, and putting yourself out there, especially as an actor, in the most vulnerable possible way. Um, and that's, I think, how you go through life. You go through life trying to, you know, just be open-hearted and welcoming people Open-hearted, open more yeah. than that. And a little talent doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt either. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, auditioning is what? It's mostly rejection. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hardest part of auditioning is not getting the part. That's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the hardest part. Do you have a, a, a technique for dealing with that? You know, my, my ultimate technique is, is kind of my, my life motto. Uh, I usually go by this. This is my life motto. Acting is what I do. It's not who I am. So uh, I like to take great pride in being a, a proud son, proud brother, proud uncle. So whenever I have a bad audition or I don't get the part, I just look into my mother's eyes, I look into my father's eyes, look at my nephews, and I say, life isn't so bad, it's just oh, a part, oh. you know? That's, that's my life model in general, so that's my coping mechanism also. Okay, I yeah. wish I had figured that out like years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, as an actor, you're dealing with it? Of too. course, of yeah. course, we all go through it. Mm -hmm. I, I, Nick, you've, you've been in shows all over South Florida, mm -hmm. working at theaters all over South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, give, the, uh, give us an idea of what it's like dealing with different um, artistic directors and mm -hmm. casting agents when you go. Do you change your technique or, or um, uh, change your approach to how you deal with each audition based on who you're auditioning for? Absolutely. I, I think, um, especially, you know, in the last five years, I've, like you've said, I've gotten a chance to work at a lot of the theaters down here. So whenever I audition for somebody who I've already worked with, um, at, let's say Actors Playhouse, for example, right? I've worked there five times already. Uh, thankfully, I'm very lucky. Uh, <laughs> so whenever I go in an audition for Dave, um, it, it's a lot more laid back. It's, it's a kind of... Um, We've already built this rapport, this relationship with each other. So I just try to go and prove to him that I'm the best person for the part. Uh, now, if I'm auditioning for a, a place I've never worked for before, uh, my mentality changes into, okay, I want to prove to them that I am talented and that I am somebody that they want to work with. So uh, it's a little more, uh, you know, rehearsed, a little more, uh, you know, straight laced. I'm much more professional, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of treat it differently in that, you know, this is my first time auditioning for these people, so I want to make a good impression. So absolutely, it, it changes with each audition. Do you? Do you? Um, I think most of the civilians that are watching don't understand mm -hmm. how many times in a year, calendar year, mm -hmm. will you be out auditioning? Do you do it? Once or twice a month, do you? There are mass auditions. I know for several people. Right. Explain to people how this works. You know, it varies, uh, especially here in South Florida because there's such a, a big uh, TV market. Also, so um, if I'm not auditioning for a theater, there's always a TV casting that I'm going on, and, and more more often than not, especially lately, uh, I go on a lot of the TV castings, mm -hmm. and sometimes those you know range from I don't know, six six a month to ten a month to really? two a month. It just it depends oh, on how impressed. often it is. Mm -hmm. um, now when it comes to the theater uh, scene, usually what happens is they'll have their general auditions and then um, it's just, you know, call back here and there uh, if, if you're lucky. And uh, most times that's maybe once a month, if that, if that. And once the season gets going, there aren't really many theater auditions because uh, mm -hmm. the theaters, you know, tend to cast 
pretty far in advance down here. If you would, uh, take sure. us through the difference between auditioning for oh, a film you. or television show and sure. uh, auditioning for theater. Uh, a, a theater. Okay, well, the, the first thing that just pops in my head is that with a theater audition, uh, it's much more personal in that the director will reach out to you personally uh, to try to get you to come in and audition. So that goes back <laughs> to the original question that you had mentioned before where the, relation, the past relationship goes into play. Um, and usually they'll send you sides, music to learn. You have a few days to get ready, a few days to prepare. What is this you thing, sides, you speak Side. of? So yeah. they're, they're <laughs> basically <laughs> cuts of the script. Ah. Uh, they'll give you little sections of the script that they want you to learn to go in and, and you know, perform in front of the, the director. Um, and then when it comes to the TV section, uh, uh, the question, uh, you know, my agent will call me. It's very impersonal. I've never met the director before. I, you know, maybe the casting director, if I'm lucky, I know that person already. Uh, but it's the same thing. But you know, with a TV audition, you might have a day to prepare, a few hours to prepare, which puts the pressure on you a little more because it's less time to get ready. Sure. And, uh, and then you walk into the room and you realize, oh my God, there's so many men that look just like me. <laughs> or God, they have better hair than I do. Or, you know, they're, they look like Fabio. Fabio's in the room, that's great. Um, <laughs> so so it, it can be a little daunting, uh, especially for me, where my, most of my training is in theater performance. Yes. So uh, I'm much more comfortable going in for a theater audition than I am going in for a TV well, audition. What prep do you do that he's talking about? What prep yeah. do you do? Do you start two or three days earlier? Do you tailor it? for the particular show that you know they're doing. Right. And if you don't know the show, what do you do? Well, if I don't know the show, I just try to do my research on the show immediately, as yes. soon as I find out that I'm being considered for the show. Uh, so, you know, that the internet is a great, great, great resource. Um, if there's a song that I have to sing that mm -hmm. I only have a couple of days to, to learn, um, I try to get in touch with my pianist, my, my, you know, my, anybody who can play the piano to help me sing the notes right. And if I don't have that, YouTube is awesome. <laughs> YouTube has saved me. It's gotten me plenty of parts, I'll tell you what. Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah, and, um, it, you know, and just, you really just try to delve into it as, as hard as you can for those two, three days that you have the script. And the, the hard part is balancing your, your real life with, you know, if I could just sit at home all day and go over my music and go over my script, I, I would do that, but you know I have to work. I have things I have to take care of, so it's really just focus, having a laser focus, and getting getting ready. What's easier today is getting the script. Oh yeah, because it's emailed. Yeah, it's emailed. And as I say, because well, I'm thinking New York, of course. How did you get it? You had to go and pick it up. Right. You had to go. And, well, here too. I, I guess it was originally. Yeah. yeah. So yes, the uh, the internet is wonderful. Yeah, and in, in New York, uh, you know, I lived in New York for three years. So whenever I had an audition and say I, you know, wasn't familiar with the with the music or the the play, the New York Public Library was a huge resource. I mean, that the New York Public Library has every play you could possibly mm -hmm. think of. Every bit of sheet music. You're not you talking about the Lincoln of. Center yeah, Library. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Lincoln Center. Right. Yeah. Yes, of course they mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And they have yeah. video of a lot video of Video of it, too. That, yeah, isn't that wonderful? You can just request it and watch. Yeah, <gasps> yes. it's amazing. But well, the right. public has this concept that mm -hmm. uh, you have one, two, three, four, five audition pieces in the back mm -hmm. of your mind all the time. Is that true? You're talking about monologues. Yeah, well, monolo yeah, yeah. monologues. Yeah, I think it, it, it's somewhat true. Um, Karen can attest to this. We took a, a workshop with a, a very well-known uh, film actor not too long ago, and um, mm -hmm. his his ultimate, you know, the message that he gave us was: there are no rules when it comes to auditioning. Your ultimate objective is get the part, whatever that means. Get, get the, part. the part. I love so, it. So. Um, you know, there are certain songs, for example, that I will sing consistently. One of the, the best stories I have is um, I auditioned for Evita in North Car uh, for the North Carolina Theater in New York. And they wanted something that was Andrew Lloyd Webber-esque. Mm -hmm. And in looking in my book, I realized, and my book is, you know, it's a collection of sheet music. I said to myself, God, I, I really don't have anything that's the style Absolutely. that I feel comfortable and I don't want to learn something in a day. Right. So I was going in for Augustine Magaldi. Mm -hmm. And... I, I grew up listening to crooners, you know, Frank Sinatra, all this sort of stuff. So one of my songs in my book is The Way You Look Tonight, right? Oh. So I went into the audition room, and the first thing I said was, let me just apologize. I don't, I, I don't have anything that's Andrew Lloyd Webber-esque, but Magaldi's a crooner. Do you mind if I sing The Way You Look Tonight? And they said, sure, let me sing it. I sang it, got the part the next day. <laughs> it's just the way nope, it works. No so rules, I mean, I, I, have, no I have things, you know, I have songs that I go to, monologues that I go to, but um, you know, even if they don't fit the mold of the play I'm going in for, yeah. I keep that mentality of I just want to get the job. I want I to get the call. I was going to ask you about that. Do you mm -hmm. make the punishment fit the crime? I'm just saying. Yeah. Do, you, do you pick a monologue that's you know right for the play, or yeah, just it, what you do well? Yeah, it depends. It depends. Uh, you I know, hate I this mean, comedic and. 
Tragedy classical. Yeah. Well, I mean, we still know, we, doing that. Yeah, I, I think so. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, I graduated from Newell School of the Arts, and one of the major things about our training was getting a, a book together to fit any type of audition. Mm. So, um, if I'm going in for a Shakespeare play, you know, I can't do I can't do a, a monologue from Barry Child. I want to do, you know, a, a Shakespeare monologue. Yeah. Um, something that's just right for the time period. How many so, How many monologues do you have at your that you can? Just, in other words, you're auditioning for me right now, and I go, yeah. that's really good. Let me see something comedic. That's right. really good. And let me see something Shakespearean. Right. Do you have like a, what? I usually have about one or, one or two per genre. There you go. Um, it, it, on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Same? Different? As you're an yeah, actress? Karen. What do you do? I have to relearn all my monologues. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, that's <laughs> like, once the audition's over, yeah. I've forgotten that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a stock of, you know, mm -hmm. material that, that we go to, mm -hmm. um, and we choose hopefully choose the appropriate um, uh, monologue mm -hmm. for for the part we're auditioning for. Yeah. If it's something that I'm not familiar with, it's it makes the job a little harder. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a you know hit and miss kind of thing. But um, yeah, I'm I'm I wish I could be one of those people. And, and there are people who they they work on the audition material all the time. Mm -hmm. So they don't really, they, not like me, they don't have to relearn their, you know. But once you know it, you know, once you look at it again, it, it comes back. But I, I'm not one of those people that keeps, you know, okay, I got two classical a monologues, library, yeah. I got oh. two comedic monologues, I got two, you know, I have, a, you know, a stock of, of material and then I choose from that when I get ready to pre prepare for an audition. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's my... Um, How do you two deal with the rejection? <clears throat> Do you, I mean, when, when some, you want a part real bad and mm -hmm. you, don't, you either don't make the, even make the callback. I mean, what um, do you, right. how have do you, you do Have that? you seen the character on Orange is the New Black who beats herself in the head? <laughs> 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 I can't believe it. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, I used we're, to we're teach. All saying, we're all saying, no, I'm just kidding. No. Not really. <laughs> not, really. No. I mean, not really. I'm much better at it than I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, I used to take it personally. I used to, uh, you know, I used to, um, see it as failure right. um, mm -hmm. when I was younger um, but you know I've grown over the years and I, I know that it's not personal and I know that every mm -hmm. it's subjective when we walk into the room we don't we don't know really what it is they're looking for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all we can do is our best mm -hmm. and hope for the best mm -hmm. yeah. and when we leave the room to leave it there and not to take it to leave it, to, it yeah I used to teach years ago and I wound up teaching a whole session on rejection mm -hmm. as a result of personal experiences of which I've had many <laughs> <laughs> in a long time and um, uh, two different things um, I the first time that it happened to me I was trying out for MAME I remember mm -hmm. this time and I had a call back and another call back and I didn't get it and I said, mm -hmm. wow, and that's really, really hurts after all those callbacks. Six months went by, I got a phone call from the same director mm -hmm. saying, I'm doing MAME, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, we couldn't use you for the other one. He said, would you like to do Vera, which is what I wanted anyway. Right. There you go. So I used that mm -hmm. as a class. Mm -hmm. You're never ejected mm -mm. when you think about sure. it. Mm -hmm. You stay back here in the month. Something else, Nick, I wanted to yeah. ask you about. Uh, another thing too, I don't want to drop names, but I, w <laughs> I once saw an audition on Broadway for Anthony Newley was doing a new show, mm -hmm. and I was auditioning for his wife, which is a very funny concept to begin with. But anyway, um, <laughs> and I sang a song that was written for me. Oh, wow. It's called I'm Something, and the last line is, you people who give up on nothing but me, I'm something, and it's a big bell. And he yelled out, she sure as hell is, call that girl back and come here, I want to learn about the song. Wow. He lost me. He was introduced in the, in the song and the composer. Oh. It was, he called me back, but I mean, I didn't get it, obviously. So I don't know, have you, original material. I mean, was that a gamble? Is it better to sing something that, from the show, for the show? Do you have anything that's unheard of, un, you know, unknown, Do tried you know, it? I, uh, not really, I, I, I like to play, I kind of like to play it safe, because. I, I like to, I always say this, I'm not the best auditioner, so I just want to do stuff that is safe, because <laughs> I feel like if What's I'm... safe? Uh, the songs that people know, um, um, or song, not just songs that people know, but songs that I know well. Mm. Um, for example, uh, If I Loved You is one of my go-to songs, because right. I just know that song like the back of my hand. And if all they want to know is, can this guy sing? Can he sing? Can he carry the tune? You know, and, and that's, that's my usual go-to. I, I don't like to uh, take too many risks. Um, 
Do you get nervous still? Oh my God! It's one of the hardest yeah. parts for me is is combating nerves. Oh, it, well, that's that, that's that's why I, I like to say I'm, I'm a bad auditioner because I I have major anxiety before I go into a room. What is? Do you have a process? Do you have a, something to calm yourself before an actual audition? Um, breathe. I just <laughs> I mean I know that sounds so simple. Always a good note. Just catch, yeah, catch, just try to catch your breath, take good deep breaths, and and. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. just try to remind myself of the, the mantra, right? Uh, I, acting's what I do, it's not who I am. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, life is okay. L you know, nobody's gonna die if I don't book this part. Uh, and that's ultimately what calms me down. Well, we've had casting people sit here and talk about how they have an image in their mind mm -hmm. of what they're looking for. Oh, yeah. And it isn't that they don't like you. Right. It's how you are look in fitting into their vision, Absolutely. how you look next to the leading lady. There you go. Uh, yeah. uh, although, one of my favorite moments is in the movie Tootsie in the mm -hmm. beginning there's the audition scene with uh, Dustin Hoffman where he's trying out and he goes and says they say, you're not what we want and he goes I can be taller <laughs> <laughs> I can be shorter <laughs> we yeah. want somebody else <laughs> yeah. no, you know, if, if you ever get the opportunity to sit on the opposite side of the table as yes. somebody's yeah. trying to cast yes. uh, for example I, when, I'm in, when I'm in New York I get to be a reader a lot which is oh, great yes. and, and uh, you learn so much uh, explain to the audience what a what reader is, is. Okay, okay, a reader is somebody say for example you're holding auditions for one of your plays sure. right? and you have asked me as an actor friend to come in and help with the audition process by reading the, the, the opposite. scene opposite the actress who's coming to audition Got or it. the actor who's coming to audition. Um, and in doing so, I've learned so much about what the process is. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, somebody can come in who's just an astounding talent. You know, you, you just get chills about them. But, but the director will say, yeah, but you know, I'm not really looking for a brunette. I'm looking for a blonde. Would you believe I that? I need a blonde. And you just kind of go, you see, that's, that's what it is. It, this girl's insanely talented. There's no doubting it. But like you said, she just doesn't fit. Wouldn't the piece it be of nice puzzle. to know that? Oh, it's so great to know that. You're looking for blondes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you go in, let's say you go into Dave Arisco, mm -hmm. and he knows you can do this, 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 and this, mm -hmm. and you see, he says, I have always wanted to play this role, which is not how he sees me. Mm -hmm. Can you break out of that uh, uh, that perception that somebody you've worked with before mm -hmm. has? Of well, I know I can use Nick because he plays this kind of role. But you're right. going, man, I want this. Right. What do you do? Well, I, I take great pride in being an actor who can who can do a, quite a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it, frankly, it, you know, my my truth or you know my belief is that as an actor, it's your job to to bring this character to life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the character is. I find that actors who fight, you know put themselves into one type and only stick to that type are lazy actors, and that's harsh but true. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, go full out. You gotta, you know, dive head first into this character. And, and a lot of times it doesn't work out. Sometimes it's just not, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. But a lot of times if you put the work in, it'll, it'll show. But it's, it's incredibly admirable to, to take that chance and to, to try to break out of what you're perceived as being. Right. At, sometimes with glorious results. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does too, it also, opens up your, your brand where yeah. uh, the casting directors and artistic directors who would have never cast you in that particular part now know you, you're I, able to you do, can that do that. Sort of thing. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You won an award last, this, this year for doing the lead in, in the Heights. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> did you audition for that role? Oh, or? I did. Yeah, okay. I had four callbacks for that. Show. Wow. Okay, yeah. and I remember you saying that you were apprehensive about it because you'd never rapped before in the mm -hmm. lead character. Yes. Raps. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? A lot of publicity about that, too. Oh, I worked. know. It's, if you're reading every article, it worked. It totally <laughs> worked. See, I was smart. I fooled you all. No, uh, <laughs> no, uh, well, no the, the truth is, it's true. I, I mean, right now, if you were to try to drop down a beat and ask me to rap, I wouldn't. I couldn't do it. Oh. I really don't know how to do it. Um, but... Uh, I, I cheated in a sense <laughs> with, uh, as soon as the show came out, I mean, I fell in love with it. The show is just spectacular. Yeah. And, you know, I'm one of these actors that every time I watch a show, especially if it's on Broadway, I always go, okay, if that show's ever done, <laughs> I can play that part. That's the part I want to play. <laughs> so, in watching In the Heights, I knew, okay, Usnavi's my character. That's the character that I need to play. It. So, you know, I just became a fan of the show and listened to that soundtrack religiously. And um, and then also, I mean, Manny Schwartzman, who was our musical director, he just brought that music to life and made it easy to learn for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, I mean, growing up, I was a huge hip hop fan. I loved hip hop. I, I grew up in Hialeah, Florida, and and um, hip hop was huge, you know, in my inner circle of friends. So that's, you know, I grew up listening to the, the likes of Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac, and so I mean, I kind of had a sensibility for that already. 
uh, and uh, you know, by the by the grace of Manny Schwartzman, he really saved me, man. He, he, he really <laughs> helped me. Still, the difference life. out in New York can hear it. Yeah. Is there really a difference auditioning? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Tell us. Tell us. Okay, People so, want to go. Should they? <laughs> yeah. Well, for, yes, absolutely. And uh, I, I always say this to any young actor who's watching this right now. Um, it, if you want to move to New York, and you're an actor, join Actors Equity before you move up to New York. And I'm going to say it this way because I've gone to auditions in New York where members who are, or actors who aren't a member of Actors Equity will wait three, four, five hours in the room for, say, an audition for a Broadway show. And then the casting director will come out five hours later and say, I'm sorry, we're not seeing any non-equity people today. So um, it, it's, it's daunting. Um, but there's, there's, there's thousands of actors in New York. Thousands. They all look like you, sound like you. The competition is fierce. huge. Fierce. It's so fierce. And here in South Florida, I mean, the pool's a little smaller. And once you're in the pool, it, it, it becomes a little easier. Um, that's one of the hardest things for me is realizing, you know, down here, I mean, I, I've built a career somewhat. And uh, in New York, nobody knows who I am. And I'm just, I'm one of the, the 100,000 actors that are there, you know, pushing the pavement. But you worked. And you I got worked. work. You did something I did. right. I did. I did. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very cutthroat. Um, it, for example, uh, also here in South Florida, you get an appointment time, you walk in and you have your appointment time and you're set and you're good to go. In New York, uh, it, the, the appointment times are just so around the clock and a lot of actors have to wake up at five, six o'clock in the morning just to get on the list. And that's mm. exhausting. Yeah. That's absolutely I've exhausting. Been there, done that. Yeah, <laughs> it's brutal, it's brutal. Yeah, remember it well. If mm. there's a part that you're interested in mm -hmm but the, the director might not necessarily be considering you for. Mm -hmm. it, what do you do to try to convince that director to see you or, and, and eventually to hire you? Well, ultimately, my, my goal, and this goes for any audition too, is to try to just remove any layer of Nick. I, I leave Nick in the car mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know, walk into the room as this person. Oh, wow. Um, ultimately. Uh, because I want, I want the director to know that this character is in my blood. You don't know it, but I know it. He's in my blood. And I'm going to show you that he's in my blood. That's, that's with any audition, really. Did you learn that? Was that part of your education at New World School? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, New World School of the Arts broke me down. They, you know, I was, uh, when I went to New World School of the Arts, I was a superficial actor. I was, you know, just mugging my face off. You know, like that, that, that's what I thought acting was. Uh, but, but New World broke me down. I was like, no, you got to find the truth in these characters. It's all about the truth, truth, truth. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I, you asked me once when I did your uh, uh, online questionnaire. questionnaire. Yeah. Um, where, uh, you know, I, I, I said that there, there's no difference between any of the characters that I play. It doesn't matter what their ethnicity is, what their background is. If you find the truth of these characters and what makes them tick, what, make, what air they breathe, what music they listen to, all this sort of stuff, it all just comes naturally. And that's... Are there do's do. and don'ts? I mean, as a reader, mm -hmm. you must have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what advice do you have to high school and college and colleagues that you go, okay, this you should do, this you should stay the way, mm -hmm. hell away from. Uh, well, the, the first don't is, is just don't be uh, arrogant, don't be a jerk. <laughs> I, I mean, I know that sounds like no, no duh, but, but it's true. I mean, there's a lot of actors that come in that you know, are just rude, they're rude. And I, I, I'm, you know, they just, it's almost like they, they feel like they're being punished by having to come in and audition for you, which is just not the way to go about it. Um, be pleasant. You know, be, be um, honored to have this opportunity, these five minutes devoted to you. Mm. And, and uh, you know, do whatever it takes to get the part, ultimately. Um, I mean, that doesn't mean, you know, I, I would say don't like, you know, do things like spit on the floor or nothing like that, but um, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, you know, be, be presentable, you know, and, and be somebody that the director looks at and goes, I want to work with this person. I want to I wanna be in the same room with this person for mm -hmm. six, seven weeks. Have you ever had an audition and as you were giving the audition, you knew, <laughs> you said, this is, this is it, I've got this one. Has that ever <laughs> happened to you? Ah, has it ever happened to me? Um, what do we know? How about this? <laughs> how about, th yes, it has. Oh. Uh, it, more often, no, but, but <laughs> it has. Um, I, I'm gonna say, even though I went in four times when I did Usnavi, when I did my auditions for Usnavi, um, I kind of knew, I was like, I did the best I could possibly do, and it was pretty damn good. And if, it, if I don't get it, it's for reasons that are out of my control. 
Um, that's well, great. I, you know? <laughs> along the same lines, have you ever been in an audition and thought you were tanking, and then next thing you know, you get the call? I mean, saying you got the part. Has that ever happened? I saw it on Facebook. You put something on on Facebook. I just gave the worst audition. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember that well. I was yeah. like, I bet you he gets that part. Well, I didn't. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the part. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting to. Uh, but no, I, 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 I did. I mean, um, I don't know if you guys remember, I did a play called uh, Dr. Radio at Flat Floor of Stage yeah. a few years ago. Let me think, you might have, oh yes, won a Cardinal I, I did, award I did, for I did. That yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, but, it, you know, uh, Christopher McGovern, who was, you know, running the audition and playing, and, you know, one of the writers of the show, asked me if I had any Latin music to sing. I didn't. You know, I, I was trained to be this baritone, this, you know, musical theater baritone. So I had no clue what I was going to sing. And then eventually he was like, well, let me, let me just play the song from the show. And I, you know, I tanked it. I mean, it was just awful. Learning the show, you know, learning the song in two minutes, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but sure enough, I still got it. And, and wow. I won a Carbonell for it, which was great. Well, right there, you, you never know. You never exactly. know. Exactly. There were no exactly. rules. There were no regulations. <laughs> not, not it's, at all. it's always comforting to hear other uh, actors say they gave a terrible audition. Because, you know, after you oh. give one, you think you're the only person in the world who's <laughs> oh, ever God. been that bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll never uh, want to uh, see me again. I can't yeah. wait to get out of here. What did I do? I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most times when I give a bad audition, I just run out the door. I don't even <laughs> say bye to anybody. <laughs> just, I can't make eye contact with anyone. I gotta leave. Yeah. But well, real quickly, yeah. real quickly, yeah. when that happens, Mm -hmm. Can you attribute it to one or two specific things that caused the audition to go badly? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's anything specific. It's more just, you know, I, I acknowledge that I didn't give the best that I could possibly mm. give today. Nerves. Uh, nerves. My voice maybe wasn't in the right place. I wasn't focused in the room. Maybe mm. I didn't prepare enough. I mean, it's just a, a huge cloud of, of reasons. Uh, but ultimately, it's just a test to, I didn't give the best audition today. Well, only That's because okay. we have to wrap this up. Oh, sure. I mean, wasn't this fascinating? <laughs> <laughs> I think more so Hopefully for the I didn't people scare who any future nothing, actors away. nothing, nothing, nothing no, about what scare. goes on. And I'm so glad that we're able to share. It ain't that easy. Look what we go through. It, it, it's expensive, too, you know, mm -hmm. all these things that just ain't. And I don't realize the money that we invest each time constantly that we do. But we do it for you. We do it for ourselves just to be able to do it and to bring theater and bring what we do to you. I love it. So, and that's why I'm so glad you're watching because this is what you want to know and what we're helping you learn. And, and it's important for Nick to know that when he's on that stage, next time you see him, and you will, you say, <laughs> wow, I wonder what he went through this time to get that job. <laughs> because that is really rather fascinating. Yeah. We're so glad that you join us every week here so we can share all this with you. And uh, what I'd like to um, certainly suggest that you find out what's going on in theater so that you all will be sure to go tune in to Florida Theatre on stage.com. You notice I said tune into it's just automatically. <laughs> but you, will, you know what I mean, I'm sure you do. And please continue to watch us and go to the theater. Please enjoy this. Enjoy this. Thank, you, thank, thank, you, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.